HIV drug resistance has the potential to derail the progress made in the efforts to control the HIV epidemic. Therefore, it is important to continuously survey and monitor drug resistance in naive patients and patients failing therapy. Unfortunately, most of the methods currently used are expensive to implement, especially in the context of the magnitude of the HIV epidemic in sub-Saharan Africa. Here, we demonstrate a low-cost and open-access method for HIV drug resistance genotyping. This protocol is divided into four stages, RNA extraction, reverse transcription and PCR, sequencing and bioinformatics. HIV RNA is extracted using the Kyogen Viral RNA Kit. The method uses columns to trap and clean precipitated RNA. At this stage, always include positive and negative controls. Before starting, calculate the volumes of each of the reagents required for the number of samples being processed. It is recommended to always add a reagent control in addition to the extracted positive and negative controls. Prepare the DNTP primer mix by adding 0.5 microliters of the primer RRT21 and 0.5 microliters of the DNTP mix to a clean sterile 200 microliter PCR tube, followed by briefly vortexing. Prepare RT enzyme mix by adding 1 microliter of the 10 times buffer, 1 microliter of 0.1 molar DTT, and 2 microliters of 25 millimolar magnesium chloride to a sterile tube. Add 0.5 microliters of each of the enzymes, RNA is out, and superscript 3 reverse transcriptors to the enzyme mix tube followed by a gentle mix. Keep the tubes with the DNTP primer mixes and enzyme mix on a cord block and move to the RNA station. Add 6 microliters of the RNA to the DNTP primer mix tube. After the addition of the RNA, move to the PCR room with all the tubes on a cord block. Centrifuge the DNTP primer RNA mix and place them into a thermocycler. Heat at 65 degrees Celsius for 5 minutes and rapidly cool to 4 degrees Celsius. Hold for 2 minutes. Pause the thermocycler while still at 4 degrees Celsius. Take out the tubes and add 5 microliters of the enzyme mix while keeping the tubes on a cord block. Mix gently, followed by briefly centrifuging and return to the thermocycler. Hold the tubes at 50 degrees Celsius for 60 minutes, followed by 85 degrees Celsius for 5 minutes. Cool to 37 degrees Celsius and pause as soon as it reaches this temperature. Take the tubes out of the thermocycler. Quickly add 0.5 microliters of RNA's edge to the tubes and return to the thermocycle. Hold at 37 degrees Celsius for 20 minutes and then cool to 4 degrees Celsius. Before starting, calculate the volumes of each of the reagents required for the number of samples being processed and the controls. In addition to the three controls, positive, negative and the reagent, you can also add a PCR control. The first and second round PCR mixes can be prepared simultaneously and the second master mix stored at minus 20 degrees Celsius until needed. Mixes can be stored for up to 8 hours. Add the water, 10 times buffer, magnesium chloride, DNTPs and primers in the amount shown on the table and vortex. Add 0.1 microliters of platinum tac polymerase and gently mix. Early coat 23 microliters of the master mix to 200 microliter PCR tubes. With the master mix tubes on a cord block, move to the PCR room. Add 2 microliters of the seed DNA to 23 microliters of the first round PCR master mix. Close the tubes, put the samples in the thermocycler and run the PCR program. 
continue to second round PCR stage or store the first round PCR products at minus 20 degrees Celsius or colder until required. For second round PCR, add 2 microliters of the first round PCR product to 23 microliters of the second round PCR master mix and use the same PCR program. To evaluate the PCR amplification, perform 1% agarose geoelectrophoresis at 100 volts and 400 watts for 40 minutes. Positive amplification can be visualized as a 1315 base pair fragment. There should be no amplification in the negative and reagent controls. In preparation for the sequencing reaction, the positive second round PCR products are cleaned up using the PureLink PCR purification kit. Add 80 microliters of binding buffer to 20 microliters of PCR product and pipette mix. Add the sample mixed with the binding buffer to a PureLink spin column in a collection tube. Centrifuge the column at 10,000 RCF for one minute. Transfer the column into a new collection tube. Wash the column with 650 microliters of wash buffer. Centrifuge the column at 10,000 RCF for one minute. Transfer the column into a new collection tube. Fuse the column at maximum speed for 2 to 3 minutes. Place the spin column in a clean 1.7 ml elution tube. Add 40 microliters of elution buffer to the center of the column and incubate the column at room temperature for 1 minute. Centrifuge the column at maximum speed for 2 to 3 minutes. The elution tube contains your purified PCR product ready for sequencing. Discard the column. The PCR products are sequenced using the Big Dye Terminator Kit version 3.1 and four primers for each sample. For each of the primers, set up the sequencing reactions as indicated on the table. Gently mix the master mix by inverting the tubes. Ali caught 9 microliters of the master mix to a 96 well plate. One plate will run 24 samples. You can use layout below in which each column accommodates 2 samples. Add 1 microliter of the DNA sample. Cover the plate and gently mix. Centrifuge at 3000 RCF for one minute. Place the plate on the thermocycler and run the cycling program. When the PCR finishes, clean up the sequencing product immediately. The byproducts of sequencing reactions as well as excess determinators can interfere with sequencing electrophoresis. It is therefore important to clean up the sequencing products to remove any excess primers and incorporated determinators, salts and enzymes before loading the samples for automated fluorescent DNA sequencing electrophoresis. The method used here is a simple ethanol sodium acetate protocol. For each sequencing reaction, mix 50 microliters of absolute ethanol and 5 microliters of 3 molar sodium acetate. Using a multi-channel pipette, add 55 microliters of sodium acetate ethanol solution to each well. Seal wells with adhesive foil, ensuring that each well is sealed properly and vortex to mix. Centrifuge at 3000 RCF for 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, remove cover and in one smooth motion, invert the plate onto a folded chem wipe. Centrifuge the inverted plate 
at 150 RCF for two minutes. Immediately add 150 microliters of cold ethanol. Do not delay addition of ethanol at this step. Seal with the same adhesive foil cover and vortex. Centrifuge at 3000 RCF for five minutes. Invert over folded chemo pad and centrifuge inverted plate at 150 RCF for one minute. After the centrifugation, place uncovered in a thermocycler and dry it at 50 degrees Celsius. Once dry, seal the plates with adhesive foil covers, wrap in foil and store at minus 20 degrees Celsius until ready to proceed with the sequencing electrophoresis. When ready to sequence, dissolve in formamide, denature and load onto the 3130 genetic analyzer for electrophoresis. Launch the program Genius. Create a working folder inside the local documents to store the sequences. Import the ABF files generated by the sequencing machine to the Genius working folder using the import tool. Genius will allocate percentage quality scores for each sequence imported. Open sequences with quality scores of greater than 70% by double clicking on them. Each file should open in a new window. Genius will indicate the quality at each nucleotide position of the sequence using light blue bars. The higher the bar, the better the quality of the best score. Using your cursor, select the midsection of the sequence, leaving out the ends. Click on the extract button to extract the region with high quality sequence. Select all four extracted sequences for each sample and assemble them against an annotated reference sequence. Inspect the assembled sequence to ensure that you are in the correct reading frame. If you are in the correct reading frame, the beginning of subtype C protease should start with the following amino acids. P, Q, I, L, W, T. The beginning of RT will start with P, I, S, P, I, E. Extract the contig region covering the beginning of protease to the 300th RT codon. During this process, also check for insertions or deletions. Go through the consensus sequence of the extracted contig, identifying any ambiguities and verify positions with mixed bases by inspecting quality, symmetry, height, background, and shoulders of the flanking regions of the bases. Select the consensus sequence and click the extract button to create a separate file of the consensus sequence generated from the four primers and label it appropriately. Export the sequence to a backup storage folder on the computer or network. Analyze the sequences using the HIVDB program at hivdb.stanford.edu. Check for deletions and insertions on the summary data and that the sequence covers all the 99 protease codons and the first 300 RT codons. Check for any highlighted QA issues in both the protease and RT regions, such as top codons, frame shifts, ambiguous positions, and unusual residues. Blast the new sequence against a local sequence database from previous runs. If the new sequence is greater than 97% similar to any of the sequence in the database, all the stages of the protocol should be reviewed, starting with sequence analysis going back to the RNA extraction to ensure that there were no mix-ups or contamination. If no problems are identified, 
resequence both the old and the new samples. If the sequences are still greater than 97% similar, review the patient history to assess for any epidemiologic linkage between the patients. This is also another quality tool that is employed to identify contamination, sample mix-up, or samples from epidemiologically linked patients. Align all the sequences from the database using the Cluster W program in Genius. Manually check the alignment for misaligned sequences, deletions and insertions, and edit accordingly. Construct a phylogenetic tree using Genius Tree Builder or other tree builders in Genius. Examine the tree for samples with short branch length. Review the samples with short branch length for possible contamination. Log into the Rega DB using a unique username and password. On the drop down menu under patient ID, select begins with. Add the patient ID and select the patient whose sequence is to be uploaded. On the menu to your right, select Viral Isolate. From the options under Viral Isolate, select Add. Enter the sample dates, sample ID, sequence ID, and sequencing date. Select Choose File and then navigate to the faster file to be uploaded. After selecting the faster file to be uploaded, click on Upload. Once the uploaded sequence appears in the nucleotide box, click the OK button at the bottom right of the window. Check for proteins in RT protein alignments by clicking on protein and selecting either PR or RT. Check for the drug resistance mutations using the resistance button. This gives you the resistance profiles from three algorithms. ANRS, Stanford HIVDB, and RegaDB. Click on the Viral Isolate Report tab. Select the algorithms for the interpretation of the genotype and the report template to use. Once the algorithm and the template are selected, click on Generate. Download the RTF document generated. Open the RTF document as a Word document. Resize the treatment history chart. After the chart, add the section Clinical Chart and Resistance Interpretation. Add a description of the patient's treatment history and the viral isolates resistance profile. Also add a description of the patient's viral load and CD4 profiles. Send the report to the ID specialist for review and recommendations on future patient management. The reduction in the overall cost of this protocol was achieved through four different strategies. The first one was scaling down the reaction volumes at almost every stage thereby allowing more efficient use of reagents but at the same time maintaining sequence quality. Secondly, reduction of the sequencing primers. Most protocols use six to eight primers to sequence the pore region, covering the protease gene and the first third of the reverse transcriptase gene. A set of four primers are selected to sequence the same region without compromising on the quality of the final sequence, thereby reducing the sequencing stage cost by at least a third. Thirdly, the use of mostly free open access software and programs for sequence analysis and report generation allowed for a further reduction in cost. And lastly, collective bargaining and public-private partnerships. A discounted price was negotiated that allows members of the Southern African Treatment and Resistance Network to get discounted rates for all the components of this protocol. These have also been consolidated into a kit for easy access.